The Flanagans tried to cheer me up, but I was inconsolable. Jennifer. It was like a part of me had died. After all that, all I wanted to do was hurt them. I took any chance I could. Christmas, birthdays, and anything I could do to get back at them. Instead of fighting at school, then stealing, hanging around downtown with gangster wannabes, it wasn't long before the Flanagans couldn't handle me either. I was off to another foster home, then another, and another. Every time I would get angrier and angrier. Sometimes I'd be placed to families that had their own kids, and I would hate them instantly. Hate them for being happy, for being together. Whenever anyone was having fun, it would kill me, and I would have to ruin it. I would want them to suffer as much as I had. It wasn't long before I got arrested for shoplifting and put into a home for troubled kids. Started partying. It was fun at first, you know? It took the pain away. I didn't have to remember. Remember how much I hated my life and hated myself. Then it got worse. I would wake up and not know where I was or who I was with or what I had done. My worker, Pat, he tried to help. Wanted to get me into counseling. God. I can't believe what a jerk I was to him. He was always just trying to help, trying to prepare me for my life after foster care, for aging out, and encouraged me to finish school. <laughs> but I didn't want to hear it. Jeez, I thought I was so cool. One night I was partying with some guys, and they were talking about Dave. They told me about his gang activity, about his drug use, and how he was in jail for assault. I tried to act like I didn't care, but it was the last straw for me. Everyone I had ever loved had left me or gone to jail. I was alone. I didn't care about anything anymore. I wanted to vanish. I started doing a lot of drugs. You name it, I did it. Then one night, I tried crystal meth. I thought I could handle it, quit whenever I felt like it. But 12 months later, I was a full-blown addict. And that's when Horace took me in. He would say such nice things to me, make me feel better, put me at ease. He would tell me not to worry, that he would take care of me, and I wouldn't get hurt. But really, he was just putting me under his control. At first, he would just hook me up whenever I needed it. But then he said I needed to start earning it. I needed the drugs so bad. I tried working once. I was, I was so confused. I kept wondering, how did I get here? Where did I go wrong? And that's when he saw me. Jennifer? David? What the hell are you doing out here? Huh? Are you working? No, I... Who put you up to this? Who? No one. I... Hey, you get your hands off my property. No, no, it's okay. I know him. I don't give up. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. That's enough. This is the life you choose? This is how you're gonna live? What the hell happened to you? You were such a good girl. This can't be your life. You, you could have been anything you want. Anything. And this is the life you choose? Oh, what about you? I've heard about all the crap you've been up to. That you've been in jail. I put that life behind me over a year ago. I'm clean. I'm in school. I've been trying like hell to get out of this hellhole. And now I find you here in the middle of it? I don't care if your mom's still in jail or if you think you're no good. Those aren't good excuses. You're worth more than this. I swear to God, if I ever see you down here again hanging out with that snake, I'll kick your ass. You're better than this. Promise me you'll stop. Promise me. I, I, I promise. You have to mean it. I do. I mean it. I promise. No! 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 Oh God! Oh God, David, no! David! David! Keep your promise. Oh God, no, and now. Watching them wheel him away set my resolve to keep my promise, no matter what it took. For the record, what was your relationship with the deceased? He was my brother. The next day, I was in Pat's office. Even after all those years of treating him like dirt, he still helped. No hesitation. I got into a treatment program, but couldn't hack it on my first try. I had better luck the next time though. This time I was ready for their help. It set me free. I was so traumatized by David's murder, I couldn't attend his funeral. It was just too much for me at the time. But going to court and putting that worm who shot David away wasn't too hard. 
For some reason, that moron thought I would show more loyalty to him than to David. <laughs> Boy, was he wrong. Thanks to my testimony, he got 25 years with no chance of parole. Therapy got better and better for me. I started to make some real progress. The memory of David kept me motivated when I was tempted to slip. My therapist was worried that I was only getting better out of guilt what happened to David. But I knew deep inside that what happened to David was the light I needed to guide me out of the darkness. That's what David always was to me. I could suffer all the pain and withdrawal, all the agony of feeling my past, all the fear of my future, as long as I kept my promise to David. That's what was important to me. One of the things I did when I got out of treatment was to go see the Flanagans and apologize for being such a rotten kid. They were so good about it. All they said is that there was no apology necessary, but still, it felt good to get it off my chest. Ugh, oh, I was so sick of the city and all its nightmares. But I didn't want to come back here either. Pat was so helpful. He busted his hump and found me a great family. One who was ready to help a relative they barely knew. And the next day, I met you and Auntie for the first time. Hmm, I remember. I just wish I knew about you earlier, you know. Maybe it would have been easier for you. It's okay. How could you know? You were in Afghanistan. Oh, I know. It's, it's just... It was the way it was, Uncle. Okay, okay. My counselor told me that coming here, facing my past, would help me face my future. Hmm. Do you think she was right? Yeah, I do. I'm so glad you trusted me enough to finally talk, Jenny. That was super brave of you. Thanks, Uncle. Hello, David. Before I get into anything, I just want to apologize for not coming to your funeral. I just couldn't do it. I was barely able to hold myself together in public. It was just too hard for me at the time, so I'm sorry I couldn't be here. But I did have my own service for you in my room at treatment. I kept my promise. I quit the drugs, the booze, smartened up and got myself back into school. I'll be graduating next year. I've been looking at university programs. And if I maintain my grades, I think I can get a scholarship. I've decided I wanted to become a lawyer so that I can help little hard asses like us when they need it. I know my future isn't going to be perfect. There are always bumps, setbacks, and failures. But I promise you, I won't give up. Thank you, David. You taught me that no matter how lousy I think my life is, I can't let it keep me down. Thank you for being the light in my darkness, my brother. I will always love you.